Hi friends, this is Dr. Srikanth from Team MDS Conquer. I'll be discussing about radiology, few MCQs. So before going into the discussion, make sure you finish this exam. Okay, so this exam is available in your radiology folder, oral radiology folder. The topics are radiation physics, radiation biology and the principles of geometry. Okay, so uh, the questions will be on these areas. Coming to the question number one, okay, the question number one is about the half value layer, okay, half value layer is nothing but, okay, it is, it is this layer, okay, it is the substance or the thickness of the substance, which will reduce the intensity by 50 percentage, okay, so you can see, so the, the thickness of the substance, which reduces the intensity by 50 percentage or which reduces the number of photons by half or 50 percentage is called as half value layer okay so that's about the first question so coming to the second question this is the most commonly asked question the question is related to the penetration power okay so if you go in detail uh, into the sequence of the penetration power the, the penetration power will be least for alpha rays followed by beta rays followed by gamma rays okay and finally the highest will be for the neutron rays okay so in this question they have asked the maximum penetration among the following is seen in so among the options the maximum penetration is for gamma rays okay so that's about the second question so coming to the question number three the darkness of the radiograph x-ray depends upon all of the following it's a simple elimination based question the answer is angulation of the cone okay so angulation of the cone does not have any relationship between the uh, the darkness or the contrast or any of these characteristic features of a radiograph okay so moving to the next question that is question number four when the time of the exposure is doubled okay so what happens okay the best option among the list is the number of photons generated is doubled and a beautiful explanation was given in the explanation part you can just have a look okay it's a very simple uh, explanation so going to the question number five the quantity of an x-ray can be measured by can be increased by is a, is a question so before going into that of course it is discussed already on the group about the quantity and the quality okay so coming to the quantity so the quantity refers to the number of x-ray photons in the beam okay as the number of photons increases the intensity of that x-ray increases any factors that affects the number of photons in the beam influences the quantity so the quantity can be affected by the current that is the tube current and the filters that are used in it and the material the target material also has some influence if there is any change in the kvp that also has an influence change in the waveform and change in the distance from the tube so all these factors are going to affect the quantity of x-rays and of course the quantity of x-rays refers to the number of x-ray photons in the beam coming to the quality the quality is a term that refers to the overall energy of the beam as the x-ray beam is polygenic any factors that increases or decreases the average energy or the together energy the all the energy of all the photons will affect the beam quality so what are they so there are few factors which are going to affect them directly one is change in the kvp change in the material of the target that is based upon the atomic number change in the filters and the type of the waveform all these factors are going to affect so if you go into the question number five the, the quality sorry the quantity of x-ray can be increased by the answer is all of the above coming to the question number six is about rotating anode okay so it's already discussed yesterday in your group you can just go back and have a look that uh, the methods there are few methods of dispensing the heat from the focal spot so out of which rotating anode is one method so the question, sixth question the answer is c coming to the sec seventh question it's a direct question related to the uh, uh, your your anatomy of your x-rays x-ray tube okay so which of the following is a false statement 
the if you see the option a tungsten target is set in the uh, copper block yes it's right and dental x-ray tube is self replicated yes of course it's also right but if you see the option c filters reduces the exposure time it is nowhere related okay and if you see option d the grid reduces the secondary radiations reaching the film yes of course it's a st right statement so the wrong statement in question number seven is c question number eight is a direct question about the properties of x-rays you can check this in your pp books dash is not a property of x-ray collimation is not a property of x-ray it's a factor by which you can reduce the size of the x-ray but it's not a property that is related to the x-rays Question number nine is a very sweet and a direct pick. That is, X-rays are a type of electromagnetic radiation. The answer is C. So question number 10 was already discussed on the group. The size of actual focal spot is one into three millimeters. So the few things that you need to add from the textbook. So these are the, uh, 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 this pick was taken directly from your PP books, which is a, a written notes from White and Farrow. So if you see the points to be, uh, points uh, to be noted about this focal spot it is the area on the target to which the focusing cusp of course you know that focusing cusp is made up of molybdenum directing the x-ray directing the electrons which the x-rays are produced so it's 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 a place where the electrons are being directed and if you see this point that is increasing the sharpness of the image is indirectly Okay, it's indirectly proportional to the size of the focal spot. Means when you have a smaller focal spot, the sharpness will be more. To take this advantage, smaller focal spots to produce a larger target area, there is an inclination. We made an inclination. How much is the inclination? Okay, so this is the target inclination. Is again a most commonly asked question. That is 20 degrees. Okay, so this is a most commonly asked question. So next goes is the actual focal spot is one into three millimeters which is a rectangle which is a rectangle in shape okay whereas your effective is a square in shape that is one into one inch other methods to dispense the heat from small focal spot okay as already we, we encountered a question is is a rotating anode so rotating anode regularly you have a stationary anode where you will have a focal spot means focal spot will be at one position in the if the, if the anode is stationary if anode doesn't move that's that spot is called as focal spot. If the anode is moving, then the focal spot will be converted into a focal tract. Okay, so uh, the last two points you can add a note. Uh, more often in an intraoral radiographs, you will use a stationary anode with a less exposure, whereas in the extraoral, you will use a rotating anode with increasing the exposure. Okay, so all these points are very very important. Please do make a note of this. Okay, so that's about. Uh, uh, the question number 10 the size of actual focal spot is 1 into 3 millimeters coming to the question number 11 okay the size of the focal spot influences the definition of the radiograph okay it, it, it helps in identifying the sharpness of the definition of the radiograph the question number 11 the answer is a coming to the question number 12 okay question number 12 is an example of an isotope that is predominantly beta that is predominantly a beta emitter okay so easy way to remember is you can uh, easily remember them as please sorry yeah okay so with this you can remember where p stands for p32 it's a beta emitter whereas sr stands for sr90 sorry stands for sr90 and yr stands for yr 90 okay so these are the three examples for the beta emitters okay question number 12 the answer is b okay so next moves to the next question that is question number 30 a beta sorry a film batch is a type of okay it's very simple a, a, a beautiful explanation was given just you can go through the explanation i hope you see uh, this type of batch that is being carried by uh, most of the pgs of radiology okay so this is a film badge okay which is nothing but a dosimeter which helps in counting the exposure for that particular individual okay so next goes is the question number 14 so x-rays were discovered on november 8th okay you can see november 8th uh, is regularly celebrated as radiology day okay so november 8th 1895 is the answer for this okay next goes to the question number 15 
the question number 15 uh, okay don't get confused basically uh, I, I know the, I know the papers it is ideology uh, so don't get confused cathode is negatively charged whereas cat ion is positively charged okay so don't get confused about cathode and cation cathode is a negatively charged so 15th question the answer is a whereas cation is a positive charge okay cation is a positive charge cathode is a negative charge so next goes to the question number 16 okay question number 16 uh, basically i don't want to go very deep into this and i hope most of you are very good at this so one is about the cathode okay so one is about the cathode and second one is about the anode okay and if you see this this is a tungsten filament which is embedded in the focusing cusp and i hope you know the focusing cusp this focusing cusp is made up of molybdenum and this cathode is made up of tungsten this is tungsten this is molybdenum when it goes to the anode this is called as focal spot the spot where the electrons are being heated and uh, this is also the target is also made up of tungsten okay whereas it is embedded in the case of copper stem all the reasons why we have used molybdenum why we have used tungsten why we have used copper stem everything were discussed in the group clearly so please do go back just have a look all these are very very important so basically anode and cathode both are made up of tungsten but anode but cathode is 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 made up of tungsten but it is kept in the focusing cusp which is made up of molybdenum and anode is made up of tungsten which is kept in the copper stem okay so if you see the question number 16 i think the better option can be tungsten and tungsten or tungsten and molybdenum comma tungsten in the copper okay so the better option that you have to go for for the 16th question the answer is b okay 17th question was discussed perfectly with a uh, with a video on your group yesterday so just go back and just have a look that is more than sufficient for this and coming to the 18th question the kvp at which the k shells ejects out the electron is 70 kvp coming to the question number 19 <laughs> is an interesting question uh, during the productions of x-rays how much amount of electron energy is converted into heat okay so out of 100 percentage out of 100 percentage okay one percentage is used for production of x-rays whereas the rest 99 percentage is left in the form of heat okay the answer is 99 percentage okay so next course is the penetration power of an x-ray is determined by kilovolts kvp that is the 20th question the answer is c coming to the next one that is 21st question okay the most common cause for the x-ray tube failure in the production of x-rays the most common cause for the failure of the x-ray tube is uh, the loss of filament or the failure of the filament is the most common cause okay so next uh, comes is the 22nd question okay 22nd question you can just have a look over the question uh, this is a known thing okay and these rays are uh, a type of soft x-rays and uh, these are soft x-rays which has a wavelength of two angstroms okay and if you want you can add other note that is about stray rays these are rays which are produced from the x-ray tube which are produced from the x-ray tube apart from the focal spot okay so regularly most of the rays will be from the focal spot so there will be few rays which will, are produced other than the focal spot those rays are called as stray rays so please do add a note about this and add a note about this these two statements are very very important so next comes is the question number 23 okay so question number 23 uh, the effect of short exposure okay on the on the contrast of the film okay the effect of short exposure on the contrast of the film is the decrease the contrast okay short exposure is going to decrease the contrast an explanation is given just go through the explanation you'll have a better idea coming to the 24th question the 24th question is about uh, the inherent characteristic features of a regular x-ray film that is uh, they provide uh, the details okay they provide the density they provide the contrast so all the difference between what is density what is sharpness what is contrast and all these are clearly given just go through the synopsis that is more than sufficient coming to the next question that is 25 question uh, 
the density of the dental x-rays is uh, the best answer will be 0 0.25 to 2.5 so among the options you need to go for option a the next verse is 26th question okay the 26th question is about the most uh, things in the cells which are susceptible to radiation the answer is nucleic acid so among the nucleic acid it is the dna if you see the damage of the dna by the uh, radiation uh, there will be break of one or both the strands of the dna the cross-linking of the dna strand within the helix will occur okay and uh, there will be there will be change of the loss of the bases that are present in the dna and there will be disturbance of the hydrogen bond between the two strands of the dna so these are the uh, biochemical or molecular changes that occurs during the radiation on the nucleic acid okay so next comes is a very very important area to be noted so these are the direct things which are taken from your pp books make a note these are very very important so don't get confused see the question number 27 which of the following has high susceptibility to radiation induced carcinoma so make a note these two tables are a bit confusing one is inducing carcinoma so how well they induce the carcinoma in the organs okay it is high high chances of inducing carcinoma intermediate and low okay so and the second table is about their reaction to the radiation reaction to the radiation reaction to the radiation causing carcinoma is this one and just reaction to the radiation is high sorry high intermediate and low and i hope you're very very clear about this so don't get confused whether they're asking radiation induced carcinoma or whether they're asking just radio sensitivity you just check that and you go according to the options so if you see 27th question which of the following has uh, high chances of getting radiation induced carcinoma the answer is bladder in that options you can see the question so the rest of the options are the bone surface okay salivary glands and skin they are low this is moderate so compared to these three options this is the best option then the 28th question which of the following has high radio sensitivity okay the high radio sensitivity the answer is mucous membrane the rest of the options are one is muscle one is optic lens another one is salivary gland so compared to these three options this is the highest one i hope you're very clear with question number 27 and question number 28 so next verse is the first complication after the radiotherapy is inflammation of the mucus or the mucus layer 29th question the answer is a coming to the next question the most sensitive phase in the cell division is okay so anyway we are going to learn uh, about the cycles of the cell in detail uh, uh, when we are taking this general embryology or general histology part but make a note this is the sequence that you have to make a note so just please do add this to your notes and uh, the most important thing is the most sensitive the most radio responsive is g2 and m phase g2 and m phase are more radio responsive and the least radio responsive is in the late s phase okay so these two statements are very very important that you have to make a note so the most radio responsive phase in the cell cycle is g2 to g2 and m whereas the least radio responsive phase is s phase okay that is that to late s phase okay so next goes is which of the following 31 question which of the following is not a capable of replication okay it's very simple basic question the answer is neuron okay neuron they don't have the capability the good capability of uh, replication or regeneration okay the next comes is uh, low threshold radiations uh, will cause us all in less time except okay so the answer is uh, inflammation of the mucosa or mucositis uh, i mean uh, we, we you have an explanation just go through the explanation that is more than sufficient for this coming to the next one that is question number 33 that is reduced salivary flow following irradiation is a dose dependent and what at what dose does the saliva flow will be almost zero okay which is already discussed in the group the answer is c that is 6000 rds next one 34th question is about the SI units of radioactivity. This is already discussed on the group. Okay, so this is a chart that you have to make a note. And uh, the easiest way, of course, you know the SI units, they come first and the traditional units, they come next. So if you want radioactivity, you can remember it with a code RPC. R P 
and see okay and equivalent dose and effective dose you can remember with a code uh, e s r okay you can remember with a code e s r so rest all you need to practice make a note don't get confused this conversion is again an important area where they can ask multiple questions coming to the 34th question what is the si unit of radioactivity the answer is b so next goes is the best x-ray for the mesodense you can see an inverted uh, supernumerary here the best uh, radiograph for a mesodense is occlusal radiograph apart from this you can see in the occlusal radiograph you can see salivary uh, submandibular calculi also okay uh, that is also uh, again the radiograph of choice is occlusal radiograph coming to the question number 36 bite wing radiographs are taken uh, mostly to to uh, enhance i mean the best option right now here is uh, the proximal caries okay the best option uh, to identify the best radiograph to identify the proximal caries is bite wing and even you can go for a better option like a paddling angle technique also is the best option to identify the proximal caries the next goes is uh, the localization of an object is done by uh, question number 37 that is tube shift rule so we are going to discuss about that in the group which is nothing but slob rule i hope you are very good at this that is also called as buckle shift rule by changing the angulation you can identify the object localization coming to the next one 38 digital image in computerized radiography is made up of i hope you know this the answer is pixels i hope you know the difference between voxel and pixel and everything so just do read that that is an important area question number 39 radiographic technique used to identify the spatial relationship of an object is called as the cone technique question number 40 bisetting angle technique is based upon the rule of isometry okay we are going to discuss that in the upcoming video uh, the next comes is 41 question number 41 uh, x-rays are insensitive to which light which light means the light that is used in the x-ray x-rays the light that is used in the uh, radiology department is insensitive if you see v i b g y o r this is insensitive to this end okay so by which you can go for option as yellow and red question number 42 so please do make a note about this okay uh, this table is very 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 important and particularly you are very good at films okay but you need to make a note about ccd and cyms and psp all these differences are very very important if you see question number uh, 42 image duplication is a good and a perfect uh, perfect width okay so it's a good and perfect with the uh, i mean the recent advances in the radiology because all those are computer based so how many duplications you do you get the same product outcome you can see the last line uh, where the electron copies are stored on various mediums without any loss of quality so there is no loss of quality they are all good safe and perfect okay so next comes is uh, the question number 43 so question number 43 uh, the formula is t is t means the exposure time is directly proportional to d square that is the distance square by kvp into ma okay you need to apply this the formula is t1 by t2 is equal to d1 by d2 whole square if you apply this for 43rd question okay the answer will be two seconds okay i hope you can handle this uh, if you want you can add this okay there are two types of effects one is deterministic and second one is stick and uh, the easy way to identify this is de is cell death it causes the death of the cell so the example that comes under this is death of the cell death of salivary salivary gland cells okay leads to xerostomia death of bone cells death of cells in the eye okay so all these are they leads to the death of the cell second one is they are they damages the dna okay so they are they causes some gene mutation or gene manipulation which leads to leukemia which leads to carcinoma 
which leads to abnormal tumors, which leads to some hereditary disorders. So that's the difference between these two and it is again most commonly asked question. So there was a few people asking about this, okay, that is acute radiation syndrome. So basing upon the doses, the manifestations will vary. And if you see the question number 44, in acute radiation syndrome, severe hemophilic symptoms are seen at, severe, okay. So severe are seen at four to seven, okay. The answer is four to seven gyres. So basing upon that, they can, uh, if it is more than 50 gyres, the answer will be, CVS and CNS symptoms will be, manifestations will be seen. Question number 45 is a very easy question. That is the definition of osteoradionecrosis. The answer is A. Question number 46, please do mark it. That is very, very important. In the treatment of carcinoma, the fraction of total doses that is given in each appointment ranges at 150 RAD. Okay. Question number 47, the treatment of carcinoma with radiation by inserting an internal implant. Okay, so if it is internal, that is brachytherapy. If it is external, that is teletherapy. Next goes to the question number 48. Before going to the question number 48, we'll learn something related to the speed which is given in your right and far. The film of speed lower than E should not be used for the dental radiographs. Okay, E can be used. E lower than E should not be used. Three groups, D, E and F, their comparison. So when compared with D, E is twice as faster as D and decreases the exposure by 40%. And if you compare F, decreases the exposure by 75%. And please do make a note about this point. That is, F is most preferred than any other films in the dentistry right now. And digital sensors are better than F films. How they are better in decreasing the radiation. But if you see the resolution, the resolution will be more for the intraoral film. That is, F-film will have more resolution. IOPA will have more resolution than the digital sensor. But if you see the exposure, exposure will be less for the digital sensor, which is good for the patient. And the next question is about the speed in the, in the form of numericals. Okay? But make a note, the speed is measured in these units. That is reciprocal of long stem reciprocal okay this is these are the speed values which are given c d e f okay c is 6 to 12 12 to 24 24 to 48 48 to 96 just double of each and everything this is actually the table that is given in the old edition of fight and fire but there is a slight modification in the new edition according to which the option is given but if you see the d here it is 12 to 14 but in the new edition it is 14 to 27.9 Okay, the latest speeds were given in your power play books. Just have a look. The values in the old edition and the new edition almost they are almost same with a slight variation. Okay, but the best option should be the new edition. But make a note, remember the old option also because there are few paper setters they can pick question from the old edition of the White and Pharaoh, and I don't want you to get trapped. The best option will be the new values. Okay, so 40th question, the answer is A. The next course is the 49th question. The three guidelines in radiation protection are, you can remember with a word, J O T. J for justification, O for optimization, D for dose limitation. Next course to the 50. And it's a very known thing. A L A R A stands for as low as reasonably achievable okay so i'm done for today's paper make a note please do finish this paper this paper will be having a tagline of radiation physics radiation biology and principles of geometry